Before we get into any other topic, the question is, why should you listen to me or why should you care about what I have to say? So I have uh, about 18 years experience online. I've run uh, different successful Bitcoin and crypto businesses. I've been an advisor for 17 ICOs over the last year, and I've been in Bitcoin since 2013. Um, so the first company that I own is, is a company called BlockSmarter. BlockSmarter is basically a digital agency, not in that we provide services, but in that we do behind the scenes connections. Over the last six years, we've gotten connected to a lot of different people. So we do what we call digital rainmaking. If you need to get in touch with the right person or you're looking for someone who can help with this, generally we know who to put you in contact with. We also do do some kind of consulting and, ask, and advisory services, but it's really on a case by case basis. And then the latest thing that I'm working on is a project called Coin Janitor. And before I get into the talk about marketing or what it is that you can do to improve your own businesses, I want to take two minutes to explain to you what I'm doing and, and why I think it's cool. So this is a project that we started a long time ago. And the premise is basically that there are too many shit coins in the marketplace. Today, there, there are over 5,000 cryptocurrencies, more being added every day. And the vast majority of them are just not worth anything at all. And you have users all around the world holding these bags of what's effectively worthless tokens. So the idea is that someone needs to come in and clean up. So that's what we decided to do. So the idea is we approach projects, we pay users to give us their tokens that are worth nothing, we give them real cash to do it, we take over all of the project maintenance, take over their assets, strip everything out that's of value, and then we kill the blockchain. So the idea is we're going to go and delete as many cryptocurrencies as possible from the bottom up. And for those of you who don't know me, I believe in cryptocurrency, I believe in Bitcoin first. This is not an attack on cryptocurrency, it's something to promote the health of cryptocurrency. And in order to do that, we, we've collected a lot of data. We have a, a real-time monitoring system where we track at the moment about 3,200 coins. We track them across 30 primary metrics, including health of the project, social activity, a whole bunch of other stuff. And we have a whole bunch of other metrics we've derived from it. And we use this data to determine how active is a community how strong is the project, how likely is it to succeed, and who are coins that we should be working with. We've built a lot of custom tech to do this. We have a couple thousand hours of development in already. Um, we currently have about 60 different data sources, and this is extending as we go. And the last is the plug for the ICO. As much as we've built a lot of tech, we are doing an ICO for the sake of raising publicity, for the sake of getting more cash. Up until now, everything's been privately funded by myself and other founders. And on the 1st of May, we're opening up the ICO. Now, the point isn't that you need to contribute to the ICO. Whether you want to contribute or take part in ICOs, that's your own business. But come have a look at what we have to say. Join the discussion. A year or two from now, this project will have changed the way we view failed projects in cryptocurrency. We are setting up a permanent mechanism to recycle coins that no longer fill their purpose. So join Telegram. Come ask us difficult questions. Tell me I'm an idiot. Let me argue the case. <coughs> wow, that was very loud. So on to, on to the actual topic. So we have a lot of things that I want to try and get through. So I want to explain to you how we're going to do it. We're going to talk about marketing for ICOs for a second. That is a hot topic at the moment. We're going to discuss the differences between that and marketing for a traditional blockchain or crypto business. And then I want to focus a little bit on affiliates, why I think that there's still a huge opportunity and it hasn't been taken advantage of. I'm going to run through this quite quickly. I don't know where everyone is in the audience in terms of their marketing experience. So the idea is this will be kind of introductory, high level, and I'll leave some time at the end for questions. And really, ask difficult questions, ask what you want to know, and, and bear with me as I do an intro. So the first thing to understand is that the climate for ICOs has changed dramatically over the last year. If you look back a year ago, ICOs were very easy to raise money. You basically just put it out there. People contributed. The majority of contributions came from things like the Bitcoin Talk forums or people that were purely crypto. And as this evolved, the more and more ICOs started, we started seeing a move towards mainstream media, things like Facebook advertising. We saw a lot of people start setting up pools. The introduction of 
pre-sales and private pre-sales. And in the beginning, it used to be 100% public, then it went to 10% private. Now we're sitting at 50 to 70% private before the ICO even goes public. And then recently, we've seen that there's been a lot of negative publicity against ICOs. And this has resulted in ultimately a channel ban on many of the main networks. And the big three, being Google, Facebook, and Twitter, have now all banned ICO advertising. And they've done it in a very, very unhealthy way. And that is that they've banned cryptocurrency advertising. And this is unfortunately symptomatic of what's going on in the market at the moment. The average person cannot distinguish between an ICO that will succeed or that will fail or that's a scam. And they're three very, very different things. But you go to the larger world, the average person seeing the news, or Google, or Facebook, or Twitter, they can't even distinguish between a legitimate blockchain business and an ICO. So basically, it's become a complete industry ban. And we start seeing statements coming out, like cryptocurrency or binary options. They don't know how to deal with this. This will change. But at the moment, if you're doing marketing, either as a business or as an ICO, these channels have effectively been shut down to you. And a lot of agencies were relying on Facebook advertising and Google AdWords to be able to bring traffic. It means we have to kind of go back to our roots and see what works. So the question is about return. If you look back a year ago, the idea that you post a couple of messages on a forum, you get a bit of a community, and all of a sudden you have millions of dollars, the ROI on that spend is incredible. You know, hire a couple of community managers and get millions of dollars in funding. And if you compare it to traditional VC investments, the idea of a seed round that is in the millions or tens of millions of dollars, it's insane. It's something that we've never heard about before. But today, the return on investment for most marketing in the RCO space is just not effective. So you need to be very careful. It's easy to say, well, we'll just spend money and we'll bring people and they'll come and they'll put in. But the space has changed a lot. And you're competing in a very, very crowded marketplace. It's not so easy anymore. And what we saw is that you have all these agencies appearing. RCO this, RCO that, RCO this, give us your money and we'll make sure it happens. And it started out with a $100,000 budget and six months ago it was a three hundred dollars to $500,000 budget. And now these agencies are taking huge amounts of money and advising that you spend a million dollars to launch an RCO. And the reality is I have worked with many agencies, not all of them, but in my opinion, almost every agency providing RCO services sucks. They just cannot deliver on what they promise. And this is for a lot of reasons. One is because the space is changing so fast, they don't know how to adapt. The second thing is that the majority of agencies that exist are either a couple of guys who got together to start an agency or a traditional media agency that doesn't know how to deal with crypto. There are agencies that are good, but my two cents, if you're going to work with an outsource agency, don't pick one agency to do everything. It doesn't work. Pick an agency that's good at social to manage your social. Pick an agency that's good at paid to deal with that. Pick community managers and have someone internally managing the marketing mix. There is no agency, in my opinion, that can do all of the channels successfully today in the climate we operate in. Now, when you look at what you want to do, in terms of marketing, right? Remember the context, the talk is about marketing, so we're not talking about products or tech or anything else. The idea is, what are you trying to achieve? For many, many RCOs, they fail to understand that the end goal is actually to create a business that is sustainable, that generates revenue and cash flow, that has user acquisition and lifetime value, all the kind of basic metrics when you look at it as a business. The purpose of an RCO business or a blockchain company is not to raise money. Raising money is for the purpose of the business. So you need to look past just the RCO, and you need to engage in marketing that's actually going to build towards the health of your business. So in my opinion, there are three. A lot of this data comes out of RCOs we've worked with, out of uh, marketing experience we have. We have a lot of internal analysis in terms of different marketing channels, and, and we operate according to a very strict kind of digital strategy, and this is summary of some of that. So. There's three primary objectives at the stage of RCO, if you're marketing. It's project or brand awareness. People need to know that you exist. The second is building a community, whether that's people speaking about you or actually onboarding users if you have a product. And the third is obviously raising money, what we can call direct contribution or direct acquisition. These three objectives are very different. Now, some channels will support multiple objectives. 
but some do not. And if you look at this and you kind of take what I'm saying and you look at ICOs you see or think backwards, you'll see that the majority focus on objectives that aren't effective. The idea is to capitalize the most you can on your marketing spend. Spending $10,000 now on a channel that that benefits you after the fact is a much better ROI once you go past the ICO. If you're focusing only on the raise, all the money that you raised then has to be re-spent on the same marketing channels. Don't double spend. So we have um, quite a detailed marketing strategy template that we use. This is a very simple snapshot of part of it. This is focusing primarily on digital channels. We obviously look at things like investors, other things, but just as a kind of my two cents of what works, when we work with any sort of project, my own included, we look at the channel strategy based on what we want that channel to achieve. For example, Instagram is a great way to tell people about your project, right? It becomes viral very quickly, you can spread a lot but you shouldn't expect investment to come from Instagram. The forums, if managed correctly, like Bitcoin Talk, Bitcoin Garden, they can do a lot across all. So whether you do this or some similar exercise, before you start spending money and paying people or hiring people to manage a channel, understand what the objective is. Just because it's a different product, ICOs, doesn't mean that marketing's changed. Marketing is an established discipline and we know what works. Know what you're trying to achieve before you start. <coughs> So I want to dive quickly through some of the channels. And I've just taken a summary of a couple of the types of channels that you see. So social is one of the most important channels today. And this will include obvious things like Facebook and Twitter. And the question is, what is the, the objective of each channel? And what is the best way to interact with that community to achieve that objective? So if you have a look at social, the idea is about engagement. You want people responding. You want to be tagging people. You want conversation to be happening that spreads and creates more and more awareness and impressions for your project, right? It's a very quick platform. Community is different. Community, if you're looking at things, predominantly forums, Telegram, there are some other channels. The idea here is about sustained conversation. So this isn't about 140 or 280 character tweet. This is about people asking real questions, you answering them, engaging. And this has the potential, probably more than any other channel, to actually build a community. People who see you on Facebook or Twitter, they may join your community. But people who engage with you in a Telegram channel, or you answer questions back and forward on a forum, these are people who actually become users. They understand your product deeply, and they care more about it. Content. And you'll notice that I don't distinguish between video or written content. Obviously, when we're planning specific strategies, we do. But at the end of the day, the world we're in today from a web perspective is there's no difference. Video is written, written is video. People digest content in the way that suits them the most. And the idea with these channels is really about frequency. It's about the regular production of fresh content. And one of the best things you can do is, is actually put yourself out there. As a business owner or as a product, you know, speak about you and what you're doing and let it be a real person, not just ICO reviewers kind of coming and talking about it. And questions are a great way to adapt and be agile in terms of your marketing strategy as you grow. See what people are asking. For example, just to plug mine as well, we noticed we had a messaging problem on the website. We kept getting the same questions. People clearly didn't understand part of our like, economic theory. So we deployed a new version last night with a new section explaining it. Exposure. This is where a lot of agencies are focusing and where a lot of RCOs go. This is primarily press releases, paid placements, big articles and things like the next web, um, RCO listing sites, you know, put us in the calendar, give us a top banner. These are important, but they generally don't work. Okay? Now that's quite a bold statement but I'm telling you that they generally don't work from an ROI perspective. So the aim is to get as many places as you can, and it does cost money, and the more places you are, the more your credibility increases. For most projects, RCO Bench, RCO Holder, these type of sites serve as checkpoints for customers. If they look and you aren't on those sites, or you've been rated badly, they won't take part. But that's not where they're going to learn about your project for the most part. So you'll get some traffic, but you aren't going to get high levels of contribution from an RCO listing site. At least that's my experience. 
Okay, so to try to wrap up this section for a sec, um, three kind of tips that I've noticed that systemically ICOs get wrong. Um, the first is retention. Retention is the name of the game. Whether you like it or not, once the ICO ends and the hype is finished and you stop spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on PR, you actually have to have a business that engages with customers. So focusing on that in the beginning and understanding that you need to build systems that interact with your customers is actually super important. We're gonna see a shift in agencies providing post-ICO services over the next year, and that's great and it sounds cool, but forget post-ICO and just think customer loyalty. The next thing is to cross-pollinate. You're focusing on so many different channels. You have Twitter, you have Medium articles being produced, you have all of the stuff going on. Don't silo the channels. Use all of the content from one channel to post in other channels. Move people between your environment. If you have 10 different social and kind of forum channels, you don't always need to get people to click to your website. If you are putting a link to your website, or they click or they don't, that's your only opportunity to traffic. But if you give them links to an interesting article you wrote, you keep them within your ecosystem. And what happens is the more and more they read, the more likely they are to then go through. Don't make this about contribute or nothing. Make this about engage with us on whichever channel makes sense for you and keep sending them to different channels that you own with things that are relevant. The last is email. Almost every ICO I've seen does not know how to use email marketing. Email marketing is still one of the cheapest, most effective channels online for marketing. You are collecting email addresses, you have people engaging with you, send them regular emails. Lists that are not communicated with, die. If you send them interesting articles, they are more likely to share it. If you tell them milestones about your project, they are more likely to care. Just, this is the basics of online marketing, and I think it's being missed a lot. So that's kind of the way I see the ICO landscape from a marketing perspective. It's evolving very, very quickly. I think if you're starting an ICO at this point, by the time you go live, even if you're very fast and do it in a few months, it will look very different to what it does now. But the kind of underlying point that I'm trying to get across here is we're not reinventing marketing with ICOs. Do the basics, do what makes sense, and traffic will come. This isn't you know, a silver bullet and it isn't a get rich quick scheme. Now, blockchain businesses, I wanna distinguish between those and ICOs for a second. So we have a lot of businesses that are actually not ICOs. And if you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin has been around for a long time. Um, I've been working with Bitcoin for years already. And if you were involved in Bitcoin in 2012, 2013, whatever it is, you see ICOs as a small piece of the cryptocurrency puzzle. For the majority of people that are working with crypto today, they see ICOs as cryptocurrency. Understand that blockchain businesses and Bitcoin existed long before ICOs, and they will exist long after ICOs. So we need to understand that there's a difference in the way that we market it. Some ICOs will go on to become successful blockchain businesses, some won't. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about marketing for a business, all of this high level exposure stuff, it isn't really interesting. You're not trying to go quickly to market, shoot a whole bunch of shotgun stuff out, see what sticks and raise millions of dollars. You're talking about sustaining a venture that delivers, that brings customers, that earns, you know? And if you're going to copy RCO marketing as a blockchain business, it's a very, very effective way of killing your business very quickly. So, when we look at RCOs, generally raise or you know, growth on social channels is kind of the metrics. But when you're looking at a traditional blockchain business, the metrics are basic. It's user adoption. What is our acquisition rate? What are our conversion rates? What are our rates of churn? What is lifetime value from customers? In other words, it is a traditional business. There is no difference between a crypto business, a blockchain business, a Bitcoin business, and any other online or offline business you need to acquire customers at a cost you can afford, and you need to provide them with a reasonable experience and value that they'll continue using your service. If you do that, you make money. Do not fall into the trap of treating your business like an RCO. It will not work. So, we're talking about marketing, but I'm gonna focus for a second on customer service, because in this area, customer service is one of the most neglected areas of any block of any business. The customer service that most Bitcoin or blockchain businesses provide is just really crap. It's really, really bad. Now, 
customer service can serve to distinguish you from a marketing perspective. Obviously, it increases your customer value and increases loyalty with the platform. But if you're going into a crowded space, you want to be an exchange or a wallet or a gaming platform or whatever else it is that exists, if you're the one that's providing good service, that can be a marketing USP. That can be your unique value proposition. Do not underestimate how crap the service is in Bitcoin. And if you do something about that as your business and you engage actively with people, a lot of the other things will become much easier. Focus less on getting high level mentions. Focus less on pe people thinking you're cool and focus more about providing a good experience to customers. That's how you're gonna make money. This industry is not going anywhere. We're talking about an industry that's right at the beginning that I predict will be bigger than almost any online industry that exists within a couple of years. Build for the long term by engaging customers and providing experience and service you'd like to get. That's how you'll make money. Okay, affiliate opportunities. So this is something that's, that's very dear to me. I was an affiliate manager for many, many years. I was an affiliate for many, many years. I think I did reasonably okay in both. And I've been speaking at conferences for a few years about how affiliates and brands have not taken advantage of this yet. So basically, affiliates or performance marketing is one of the largest areas of digital marketing that exists in any vertical. So I will say it as simply as possible. Any brands listening and any affiliates listening, you are both idiots. You are not taking enough advantage of this. This is a huge, huge opportunity and it's going to get bigger. The fact that affiliate marketing represents such a small percentage of crypto marketing is a failure by our industry to recognize the opportunity. If you're thinking about this, you could recognize before other people and you could make a lot of money as a result. So, in terms of brands, many crypto brands don't know how to, how to work with affiliates. They don't understand the huge revenue potential that comes from affiliates. It's not about, you know, these session-based referral links that we used to have a few years ago in crypto. It's not about putting out a message and hoping people refer. It's about having affiliate managers, about actively engaging and relationship building, signing up people, providing them materials, all of the stuff that every other industry does, whether it's gambling or dating or porn or travel. These are established affiliate industries and they work. Crypto has not yet learned that. If you're a brand or you're working with a brand and you invest the time to build an affiliate, affiliate program that works, it will pay off in spades. And then from the other side, how oh, well, the challenges. One of the big challenges is tracking. Because so much of the tracking was based on anonymous and session-based tracking over the last years in crypto, we don't have standardized tracking systems. This can be overcome. It's not so difficult. Um, the idea is that someone actually has to invest today in order to be able to track affiliates. But even Google Analytics, if you set it up right, can do it beautifully with UTM, right? Affiliates. So I think, and I've worked with a lot of affiliates in different verticals, including crypto, and, and I'm kind of going to make a bold statement, which is if you're an affiliate, you do not understand how much Bitcoin you're leaving on the table by not working in the space. There are so many areas that are coming. If you think about the internet, right? When we were talking about pets.com and all of this kind of you know, beginning and Yahoo and whatever it is, no one would have realized how big VPNs would be. VPNs are one of the largest affiliate industries. The idea of you know, social media management, the idea of hosting, look how big all these supporting services are. The same thing is gonna happen here. This is an industry that hasn't yet developed all its online supporting services. If as an affiliate you can capitalize on one of these now, when this grows, and my prediction, it will far surpass the majority of the industries we've been talking about, you will make tons of cash. And the ones who are going to win are the ones who do it early. Now let's take a step back for a second and talk about what it means to be a successful affiliate. So primarily I would say that it comes down to two things. Assuming you're willing to work hard, right? Um, the first is you have to market and build your business in a way that works for you. You can't copy someone else. This is probably the biggest mistakes I see affiliates make. Trying to copy what another successful affiliate does will not work. 
you need to do something that you love, that you enjoy, that you have a talent for, and that you can do on a regular basis. The second thing, and this is key, if you're an affiliate, the name of the game, especially with Google and the shifts we're going to see in the next years, even more than we have, is about adding value. You have a value chain, which is essentially customer to product, right, resulting in contribution. You need to find a way to insert yourself there that adds value to the experience. It's not just about conversion. It's not just about uplift. It's about adding something to the user they wouldn't have had if they'd onboarded through a normal channel. And anyone who's familiar with gaming, one of the classic examples is poker strategy. Became one of the biggest affiliates in the world by having a forum where they taught people how to play. Reviews was something we saw like seven, eight years ago, all these TripAdvisor and Amazon reviews. But add value. Give them something that the website isn't giving. Do something unique and build a community around it and let the industry grow and ride the wave all the way home. So, challenges we have here. First is fear. Crypto is volatile. Yeah, it's super volatile. But you know what? So many other problems that are worse than just the volatility. I've, I worked as an affiliate in the space. I uh, earn in Bitcoin. I'm doing okay. Forget about stupidity. Earn some Bitcoin. Um, education. You don't need to be an expert. You don't have to understand how like, these deeply technical things work or what Z stocks are or confidential timestamps. Just have an understanding of how the technology works and especially from a user experience perspective. And lastly is the verticals. We have an interesting challenge in that no one knows what verticals are going to exist. So there's obvious stuff like you can do Bitcoin travel, right? But the majority of the money that's going to come is going to come from industries that don't yet exist. So how do you take advantage of an industry that doesn't exist yet if you don't know what it is? That's kind of the catch-22 here. But if you can figure it out, I, I promise you there is a lot of money to be taken. So very simply, we are early. We are very, very, very early. Crypto is early. Marketing in crypto is early. And the majority of people have a lot to learn. But it's not about having a silver bullet. It's not about going to some website and reading what the you know, perfect strategy is. It's about being a little bit involved. That doesn't mean you have to spend 10 hours a day in Bitcoin talk. But understand what's happening from an industry perspective. Speak to a couple of people. Get a little bit in the game. And if you keep your eyes open and look for opportunities, they will become self-evident. And maybe in a year or two, you, you can buy me a drink. So that is me running through quite quickly. I've left a few minutes for questions, yes? Great. So. Hi, Mark. Hi. Um, I'm Max. Um, so yeah, uh, the, qu the question probably from the business, right? So it's slightly from the different direction. So as a business, right, I've never used any affiliation for B2C market. How as a business I would start this? So I mean, I would think probably to hire affiliate manager and then probably to introduce them to professionals like you to have a consultations that you help them to. What's your advice? How do I start? Yeah, so um, I think you're mostly right. Not every business is ready for it yet, and probably that affiliate manager in the beginning would do some other work as well in terms of community to justify the cost. But yeah, start working on it now and let that person start reaching out and it'll be slow and manual, but put in place a tracking system and have them be you know, the official representative of affiliates for your company. Let them go out and speak to people and train them very, very well before they do. Uh, hey, Mark. I'm Marco from Community Management Agency, Mazi. Um, you mentioned a lot of channels that people should use in the ICOs. Uh, what's your opinion or how would you advise people to grow these channels? And Because obviously creating channels is creating a channel, but actually build the content. But also how important are advisors uh, for ICOs? Because it's not something you mentioned, but I think a lot of ICOs that I work with don't understand the importance. Sure. Um, so, so two questions, both good. In terms of the channels, like channel strategy is a bit beyond the scope of what we can do in a couple of minutes. But um, understand the way people interact with the channel. And don't just post for a checklist, but actually try and engage people. Any channel you're working on, if the majority of your posts are, I'm cool, come buy my product, you're doing it wrong. You know, tell people things. Don't speak so much about your product and tell people about the problems that surround your product and why you created it, things like that. I'm happy to have a longer discussion, but that's kind of the first part. 
The second part in terms of advisors, so I think advisors are important. The, the nature of the role has changed dramatically over the last year. And if you're interested, I actually wrote an article about this a couple of months ago, um, which actually breaks down the three objectives of an advisor and why ICOs get it wrong. Uh, most ICOs are looking at advisors as you know, Hollywood stars, we put a name and you know, build it and they'll come kind of thing. That's not where we are. And most, some advisors are not at all engaged. They think they can put their name on a website and get paid for it. I think that's bullshit. I think if you want to get paid from someone, you need to do some work. So the clearest thing for advisors is, I think they're important, but I think the scope of the value they add needs to be defined when you do a contract. And it doesn't mean I want 17 posts a day. They're not employees, you know? But have clear, regular calls with advisors, addressing questions that they are subject matter experts in, instead of just putting a name on the website and hoping it's going to work, right? Um. And the last question. Oh. Lucky me. Lucky um, me, man, yeah. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. Um, listen, a question. I, I know I come from the gambling space, right? And I know that there's affiliate tracking systems like Netrefer and my affiliates, they have taken over that space. Do you know if there's any tracking system that is sort of trying to capitalize on this vertical? Because yeah. I still have to find one that fully understands this, this vertical. So, so there are a couple. Um, it depends if we're talking about RCOs or businesses, because they're very different types of tracking. Um, one of the, I, I will, I'll mention two companies. It doesn't mean they're the only ones, but if you're an affiliate and looking to work with something standard that makes sense, I would suggest either sell expert as a company they're worth talking to. I think there's work to be done, but they understand the space, and uh, run CPA as an affiliate network. They've been in the space for a long time. They have a really great tracking system. Um, there are a couple of others, but those are the two I think that are most advanced. But I think we're far away from standard, you know? Can I have one more question? Is there one more question? No? No. Okay. Who's going to ask me a quick question? Make it difficult. No? No questions? Okay, well, thanks very much.